Hi everyone, welcome back to another Logic Pro 2. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at how to master in Logic Pro, also referred to as mastering. This is a process when you're finished a mix, you're finished a song, you like the way it sounds, and that last final process is mastering. Typically, you would send a stereo mix down of this song and send, give it to a mastering engineer who would then take it that next 10%, give it that icing on the cake that it needs before it's sent to all the streaming services. So I will show you how to master this song directly within this Logic session. Full transparency, I send the songs that I'm going to release on my personal Charles Klein Spotify page. I will send them to a mastering engineer and I will pay for that. Today, I'll just show you how to master within Logic just to give you that extra bit of percent. So you want, if you want to send it to labels or send it to friends and you want it to sound like it is mastered, you can do it yourself. It's not overly complicated. The thing that comes down to why I send it to someone else is you need to have such a tuned ear far beyond the tuning of my ear. You need to hire like a scientist who knows the, the ins and outs of their speakers and their room to give it that little bit extra that it needs. The mastering process isn't changing the song hardly at all. It's just giving it a bit extra. So I'll go through what a typical mastering chain looks like in this session. Okay, let's have a listen just to the middle of this song into the middle of the chorus, just so you can have a vibe. And also we're gonna look at our peak value just to see how hot we're coming into the uh, master bus here. Well, the things that I say might be cold, but I wanted to see if you'll go. So I think that it's time that you should know. Ooh, Cause I know I've been faded before. You had the chance to play. We have lots of headroom here. We're peaking at negative 11.3. Ideally, you'd want to listen to the whole song. I know because I wrote this song that these are the peaks here. Um, chorus 2 might peak a little bit more, but it's not going to reach zero. So first thing, make sure you have enough headroom because you don't want to be going in too hot to the compressor and the limiter that we're going to add on right now. If you are peaking here, if this is red, try to change that in the mix versus just turning this knob down. Ideally, when you're mixing and you've gained stage everything when you've recorded, if it's a perfect world, you're sitting at this at a good headroom before you even master. If not, you could do the old hack where you highlight all the tracks and bring the volume down. If you're going to do that in Logic, just make sure that you look also at your tracks that you've automated the volume because if you do like a group volume change like this in logic it's not going to change the automation that you've coded in so here i have my channel strip i have an eq a compressor this is a tape plugin and a limiter two things down here i have a level meter which i'll talk about in a minute and then just another multimeter giving me some more information about you know where the sound is the lufs and the um rms two different metrics that we'll use to make sure we're loud enough for the streaming services. So first thing, EQ, this is this is what I mean by training your ears, why you want to give it to someone who has a very tuned ear, because these types of changes that we're going to make on the master are super small because it's affecting everything. So ideally, you'd want to listen through the song from start to finish, asking yourself, what can I do to improve the song? Can I make it a bit brighter? Can I boost the low end? Are the mids a little messy? It's overall taste versus, ooh, I don't like that frequency, or man, that vocal frequency is annoying. Those decisions are over. Those, need, those needed to have been made in the mix. Now is the time to just give an overall shaping perspective. And I do have a default uh, preset here just to show you. This could be a typical, I don't want to say that because I don't want you to go and just put this on your channel, but these could be some spots that 
could add flavor to your mix. Try it out. So uh, like a low cut, this is going to just get rid of anything we probably won't hear. A high cut at the top just to bring a bit of brightness if your mix needs it. This area, this problem area here where it can cause some muddiness if you do a boost in the low end. This area to give a bit more warmth. Notice how the curves on these, because I've changed this Fab Filter Pro Q2 to 3 dB, it might look big, but this is actually only boosting 0.49 dB. Also good to go back and forth on your speakers. I have two different types of speakers here. I have the Atom A7Xs and the Yamaha NS10s, and then I use headphones as well. So you want to be bouncing back and forth, and not to mention fresh ears listens, of course, giving breaks in between, also listening on your phone, crappy Bluetooth speakers, the whole lot. So we gotta find some kind of way to break For example, I don't even hear that change, but I just know I see sound, and it just makes me feel better that that's there. This up, you will be able to hear. This chain. And if you can't hear it, just go like this. This is what you're affecting here. You had the chance to play. This, the sound of the bass. So if you want more bass, you could do some type of shelf here, like this, or you could do a curve, which, which is what I had here. problem area here in that 160 range when you're doing a boost here. So it's cleaning that up. I kind of like that. I think that gives it more warmth in the vocal. This area. I don't really hear much of a benefit in this area. Let's try this. I wanted to believe it, but oh no, something's gonna change me. I wanted to believe it, but oh no, something's gonna change. I don't know. I think this area as well, like the low cut, I can really barely hear that, but I just, I don't think it's also hurting it. So I'm going to leave it there and see how I feel about it later. Next thing would be a compressor. So this is just a Logic stock compressor and the vintage VCA is modeled after an SSL compressor, which is a typical compressor that you might have on a bus. Compressing it a little bit. Play, play with the compressor. You probably wouldn't want to have a fast attack on this because it's on the master bus, so you want to maybe a bit of a slower attack and slower release. You could compress anywhere from three or four, four to one. Find a, an area where it's bouncing around three, maybe. Like, so you know that the compressor's engaged, and then try to listen what happens when you speed up the attack and release. Notice how when I have the attack down, it's extremely compressed, then I move it back up and it slows down. Notice when I play with the release, the further the release away, it kind of pushes it back, and the faster release, it makes it a bit snappier. You had the chance to play me. I wanted to believe it, but oh no, something's gonna change me. Loving you was all. See, that sounds that sounds good to me it's a tasteful thing compression as well depending on your genre depending on how you want how crunchy you want it to sound how smashed you want it to sound and also the instrumentation that's in in there if it's just an acoustic and a vocal the way you should approach compression will be a little bit different 
This is a tape compressor, and I usually just go through these three mastering plugins to see if it does anything. So let's see what this mastering high frequency smoothing round bottom does. Let's turn it off. Then on. I don't really like it. I'm gonna move on to the limiter and just get us at the level now that we need to be at. And then we might need to go back to the compressor or EQ to change some of those settings because often when you add a limiter, it will change the dynamic, but it will also sometimes make your high frequencies a bit louder because it's likely pushing the bass down a bit and it's becoming a bit lopsided. This is a, I use a level meter in Logic and I switch this to RMS and I'm looking for a negative eight RMS. That's just a metric that I found online that you want your song to be at. I, you can also go for LUFS, but I, I usually go for RMS. So sorry about that. I only know RMS. So basically what I'm going to do here is I have a punchy preset, slow attack, slower release, and I'm going to bring this gain up until this reaches negative eight. So I'm going to probably put a bunch of gain on here, uh, but we'll see what happens. Something's gonna change me Loving you is all I ever wanted But everything is different Before you had the chance to play me. So we hit negative 7.5 there. So we can bring this down a bit. And we can actually put this to negative 0 0.1 if you want. Negative 0 0.1. And I'm focusing on the chorus now. You should be listening through. I'm just saving a bit of time with this video. Well, the things that I say might be you had the chance to play me. I wanted to now that I switched the compressor a little bit and the EQ because I've brought us up to the limit that we need. And because of that, I need to increase the limiter now because I brought level down from the compressor and the EQ. It's a balancing act between the EQ, the compressor, if you use a tape plugin and the limiter, using the level in each of those plugins to get you to negative eight, because you could just get to negative eight through the limiter. You could also input gain more into the compressor, or you could compress it more, or output gain more, or you can add level in certain frequency bands in EQ, or you can add a tape plug and add level here. So there's different ways to add level. It's not just the limiter. Each way you add level will give you a different taste or different color. That's the balancing act to master. And it's all going back to the feel of the song, to the groove of the song, how snappy it is, how punchy it is, how you want it to sound. But usually negative eight is your North Star RMS number to get to, to be loud enough and compete with other songs on Spotify and, and online. The only way I would go past negative eight is if you're in heavy electronic music, dance music, um, like you're like Skrillex and you need, you need to push the limit, then you could probably go more like to negative six even. If you're nervous, if you're gonna go over it all, you can go to this site, go to loudness penalty, Upload your song to this analyzer and it's going to tell you if you're loud enough or how the streaming service is, how much you're, they're going to turn your song down. So you could, it's free. Upload it here and you get a bit of a test. That's how to do an in-the-box master in Logic Pro. Let me know what you guys think in a comment and I'll see you in the next video.